Alhamdulillahi <tries> ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور رحيم صدق الله مولانا العظيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم لا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين وفي حديث آخر اللهم إني أسألك الهدى والسداد أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا مولانا محمد وبارك وسلم Alhamdulillah, all praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the tawfiq and the divine guidance to be early for Jum'ah today. <coughs> and for being present in these beautiful days of Jum'ah. <coughs> Today's topic of discussion is to speak about istiqama, istiqama ala deen. We need to have steadfastness upon the deen, we need to be continual upon the deen. And I'm going to share some ayats and some ahadith and some ways of how we can have this steadfastness. Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the beautiful month of Ramadan and the activities that we did in it. But then after Ramadan, we have to become changed people. And we cannot go back to the same ways how we were before the month of Ramadan. And the activities, obviously in Ramadan, there's going to be more. Even Prophet ﷺ did more. But then after Ramadan, you have to um, just have have more, some increase from before Ramadan. Increase from before Ramadan. So as the ulama say that don't become like a Muslim who's just a Ramadan Muslim. That is just Ramadan where we became completely focused. After that we have to go back to the old ways. That's not going to work. Actually that, that's actually a sign that maybe Allah Mahfazna that our Ramadan wasn't accepted actually. A sign that the Ramadan is accepted is that you become changed. A sign that it wasn't accepted, Allah Mahfazna min. Remember Prophet Sallallahu made dua against. Remember he said if a Muslim gets Ramadan, so much rahmah coming down, right? Each day was so much, it's too much. And then we had 30 of these beautiful days. And if you still don't change, then we have dua of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. dua, a dua against that may this person be destroyed. Dua, rahmatul alameen. Can you imagine that Prophet Sallallahu you know, usually doesn't make dua against anyone. He always has rahmat, he's rahmatul alameen, right? But in this case, even he, he made dua. He said, you know, there's two other ones. He also made dua that if you get your parents at old age and you don't serve them and get Jannah through them, then you may, may you also be destroyed. And also a person who gets Ramadan and did not get his forgiveness, may you also be destroyed from Rahmatullah Alameen. So, uh, obviously it cannot be Ramadan all the time, but we have to now become this, whatever we, did, whatever we have developed, the taqwa and the sabr, it needs to be there. So Allah SWT says in the Quran in regards to istiqama, in the ladina qalu rabbun Allah, where those who say our Lord is Allah, thumma istiqamu. Meaning you have iman and then you have istiqamat. Istiqamat means continual on your religious practice, steadfastness. And you pray for this in your surah Fatiha. You know when you say, ihdina sirat al mustaqim, mustaqim has two meanings. One is a straight path and one is a steadfast path. And you're saying, ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Hidayah, you're also asking for hidayah. And then istiqama. These are such like really in you know, Surah Fatiha is a summary of the whole Quran. And just these two, these two parts in this dua, hidayah and istiqama. Hidayah, by the way, is one of the most special duas when you make dua for hidayah. And hidayah is different level. Hidayah dua is always accepted because there's no alternative. You know, when you pray for other things, maybe Allah SWT gives you something better. But in hidayah, there's no better. In hidayah is one of those duas that is always accepted. That's why we have to remember when we recite Fatiha, we, our heart has to be there. You know, many, we all, every Muslim obviously prays five times a day. And remember, du'as are only accepted if your heart is there. 
Allah subhanahu wa doesn't accept any heartless du'as. Make sense? So du'a u mukhul ibad, right? Du'a is the main part of it. Like du'a is the main ibad. Like in the whole ibadah, du'a is the main part. Ad du'a u huwa ibadah. So when you're asking for hidayah, at the end of Fatiha, make sure you say ameen. And with your heart, ameen. Hidayah. First of all, hidayah, guidance. Such a, such a ni'mah of Allah. Even Muslims need it. Non-Muslims, when they get hidayah, they get into Islam. If a non-Muslim kept making dua for hidayah, he will ultimately get to what? If, you, if he's sincere, he's going to come to Islam. Understand? All his obstacles, all he has to do is make dua for hidayah. It's simple as that for him. If he's really sincere, because hidayah has no alternative. Now, what if you and I make dua for hidayah? Do we need some hidayah? Yes. Within Islam, we need hidayah again. Or else, why would we be reading in our Fatiha, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim? So we need hidayah. So we have to make that. Guide us along the straight path. Guide us along the straight path. And then, once you have hidayah, then, then you see the straight path. Then you have to be steadfast. Sometimes, what happens to human beings is that you see hidayah in life, guidance, and then you will stop following the guidance. Like you'll have hidayah, you'll see the way, you'll, you'll get bored of the straight way. You'll go back to your old ways. No, no. Hidayah and then steadfast, continue. And Prophet ﷺ also made, asked, taught us a dua, Allah minna salukal, O Allah, I ask you, al-huda wa sudad. So that dua, hidayah and sudad, is the same equivalent of ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Now also remember, whenever we make dua in Islam, do we just make dua or do we put some action in to, to work too? Of course, action. Like for example, if you want to get married, you make dua for your marriage and you also have to try it. You have to start talking to people, right? Saying, Mira rishta karado, like here and there, telling everybody. You have to make it. You want a job? You can't just say, Yalla, grant me a job. You have to make, you have to make the dua plus you have to take the, the action. Always in Islam, dua is like that, right? That's the adab. You make dua and you try because Allah has given you hands and feet and a brain. You have to move. It's, it's part of how to ask, it's the adab, manners, or else uh, you, you're breaking the rules. So what about Hidina Sirat al-Mustaqim? So over there too, we have to first make dua, okay? Hidina Sirat al-Mustaqim, sincerely, know what we're making in our salah, and then make the effort. What's going to be the effort? The effort, how do, how do we see guidance? We get it from the house of Allah. You have to come to the masajid more. You have to sit in the company of the pious and the ulama more, along with the dua, along with the... Dua. So dua plus that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you the way inshallah. And don't take your religion off of social media. We always say that, right? That's becoming old now. All the social media and all that, that's, not, that's taking you away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not going to bring you closer. The only thing that's going to bring you closer are real human beings. We always talk about that. Yeah? The, the social media will take you away. Think of it like this. Social media is by who? Run by Muslims. Uh, YouTube, Google, all these run by very great pious Muslims, right? Juma attending Muslims. Yes? Or no? They may they will have agenda. They may have other agendas. So we have found that, you know, the, even on social media, the wrong version of Islam is highlighted. Four million viewership. And pe the right version of Islam is in the low, low viewership, 5,000. Understand? So the algorithms are also against us in that. So be careful. Islam has always been heart to heart, human being to human being. You have to be with the human beings. So Allah give us tawfiq. Abu Bakr anhu, when he was asked about this ayah, when the ayah says, oh by the way, let me finish the ayah, then I'll tell you what Abu Bakr says. He, the ayah says that basically if you're a believer and you have istiqamah, may Allah grant us, that's what we're talking about today. That you're going to pass. If you have istiqamah steadfast upon the deen, that's it. That's all you have to do. Have faith and istiqamah. Then, تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Angels will descend upon you. أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا No fear and no grievances. In the Quran, when it says no fear and no grievances, it means Jannah. That's what it means. No fear and no grievance means Jannah. وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ Basically, the idea is that if you're a Muslim and you have istiqamah upon the deen, then that when you passing away, the angels will come to you and they'll tell you right there, good news, you've passed. And you know when you pass away, may Allah give us that type of death. In Prophet used to make this dua, your death, a believer's death is peace, raha, from all the problems of life. See what's going on in the world today, look at the stress, look how much stress everybody is in with the, the killings that are going around, right? The genocide, Allah mahfazna. We've seen recently, right, with the universities, what's going on. But, um, what, does that cause stress or what? Right? Did those videos cause you stress or what? About what's happening on, on university campuses throughout nation? Does it cause you stress? 
Okay. Does the possibility of a nuclear war cause you stress? Okay. World War Three cause you stress? All the fitnas cause you But death, understand? Upon Iman and Istiqama, understand? You, you're going to forget about all that. Right? And right when you go there, the angels, when they meet you, understand? So may Allah make us of that. That's the goal. Die, leave this planet Earth. Then forget about World War Three. <laughs> the guy who died, would he care about the World War Three? <laughs> he wouldn't worry about nothing. He, he doesn't care. And the reception that you receive on the hereafter, think of that. And that reception is mentioned that each angel is want to take your soul. I say, no, give me the soul. They're, they're, they're like fighting over your soul. And then you would know immediately when you pass that you've passed. That you've passed. All you and I have to do in this world is iman, strong iman. Don't let anybody corrupt your aqidah. And have nek a'mal, have good deeds, pious deeds. Hang on to these two. Now be careful of social media. Social media wants to disrupt these two things. Your proper beliefs and your amal, it wants to destroy it. You think it's so nice? It's not so nice. It's there to destroy it. Masajid, men of Allah, they're there for the opposite. They're for fixing. So have more of their companionship. And, and inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that death. Allah give us the best of deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and you the best of dunya. Allah give us a safe akhirah. Okay, Allah give us a life where you're constantly increasing in good deeds. And then the fifth thing, may Allah SWT give you such a death, such raha, such peace, that you forget about all the mis all the stress that you have now, it's gone. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, and sometimes it feels like that, you know, when you see somebody passing away, one of the, from the believers, we feel like, oh, he's gone. <laughs> he doesn't have to worry about the world's stresses. It's just for us. So, this is just temporary. It's just here. We have to have sabr of Allah, taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ if your believers are going to be on top, there's no doubt in that. Believers are on top. Allah's party is going to win. Hezbollah, the group of Allah is going to win. Humul Muflihun, Hezbollah Shaitan is going to be a failure. You have to have Yaqeen. So as Muslims, we don't, we're not going to become hopeless. We know that at the end of the tunnel, there is light. Not that we're not, we're not sure if there's light at the end of the tunnel. We know there's light at the end of the tunnel, inshallah. Wantumul A'lona, you're at the uppermost. You are the top human beings in Kuntum Mu'min if you're believers. So this iman and yaqeen has to be built. And this is going to get built at the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give us to to frequent them. Abu Bakr when he was asked about istiqama, when the ayah says have iman, have istiqama, you can have a nice death. Yes? When he was asked about istiqama, Abu Bakr says istiqama means that your actions and your speech should be in sync. Meaning that, uh, you're not that you, your actions should be properly aligned with istiqama and your speech as well. Because sometimes what happens is that somebody's religious action wise, but in his speech, he's not. Meaning his, his words, when he gets angry, then his, wor his words can be all over the place. Or maybe his speech is aligned, but his actions are not aligned. Both alignment of action and statements. Istiqamat upon the deen. Allah grant us. When Umar was asked about this ayah, that what does it mean? That you believe in Allah and then istiqamat. He said istiqamat means that don't be like a fox. Don't be like a fox. You know, a fox is this like middle animal. It's not so strong like a lion. In fact, fox is usually, you give the example of a fox of being cowardice. Because fox always wants a cheap kill. He doesn't have strong to take down a deer or take down someone, anyone that's tough. He just, and usually he's looking for an easy kill. He wants someone's chicken. He wants, this is what the fox wants. You know, fox is an example of being cowardice. When a human being does guna, when you do sins, you're being like a fox. Understand? Like basically you're looking, you're looking for doing haram. Even when you get addicted to haram things. So Allah mahfazna. At that time you're behaving like a fox. You're looking for sin here and there. Sin here and there. So Umar Dila Tana says, Istiqamat means after Ramadan that you stop being a fox. Stop looking for this haram stuff. Just aim for the halal. Whatever you want in life, it needs to be what? Halal. Anything you want, it just needs to be halal. From food to business to relationships to anything. All there has to be is what? Haram. Halal. And looking for haram, now you're acting like a fox again. Back to being a fox. So after Ramadan, make this commitment that we're not going to act like foxes. Cowardice. We're going to become brave like the lion, inshallah. Yes? Inshallah. Alright. Then, so how do we have this istiqamat? I've kind of defined istiqamat for you, being steadfast. Straight path, steadfast. It's three things. I'm going to tell you about how to have istiqamat. Number one is dua. I've already mentioned that. You're going to make dua. And remember, in your Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqim, it's part of the package. You just have to put your mind to it. When you, at the end of when the Imam Sahib, and when you're reading by yourself, you say that Ameen with your heart, and know what you're asking. 
And then as we said, whenever you make dua, you also make amal along with it. You don't just make duas for something, you also take the steps. What if you're asking for Aidina Salat al Mustaqim, but you're sitting on social media all day long? Huh? Does that sound like a is that is that a good proposal? You, 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 you Muslims are always asked, all the ulama and mashayikh say that people have to, have to, beside Juma Khutbah, have to come sit in the company of the ulama. And you're not doing that, you're just making your dua in Fatiha, Ihdina Salat al Mustaqim. And you're just sitting back on your on your Facebook. So is that gonna work or not? It's just like saying, Ya Allah, I want a spouse. Right, marriage, and you're not going to make any efforts. You're not talking to no one. You're in the bus. You're just making dua. Is that going to happen? Can you sit at your home and just say, Ya Allah, just give me the job that I need? You're not making no resumes, no interviews. You're not meeting up with people. You're not talking. You're not making any sacrifice, and you're dreaming of this job. <laughs> Dream on. <laughs> it's not going to work like that. So you have to do both. In marriage, you have to do both. In job, you have to do both. In ihdina sirat al mustaqim, you also have to do. Both. We're going to do it inshallah. inshallah. Allah give us tawfiq. So the first thing is dua. Second, oh, and another, I'll give you one more dua. I've given you three duas. I've given you two so far. I'll just remind you first of all, Ihdina Salat al Mustaqim. It's part of the package, Hidayah, steadfast. The other is, Allahumma ni saruk al Huda wa Sudad. Allah grant me Hidayah and then the ability to walk on that Hidayah, like continuously in my life. Two. Number three, Allahumma la takilni ila nafsi tarfat ain. Oh Allah, don't let me be a victim of my ego, not even for a second. Understand? Don't fall victim to your ego. Uh, be in command. Your nafs has to be following you, not that you're following your ego. Who makes you do bad things? So don't make Ya Allah. So this is the dua of Rasulullah. These three. But he's not the only three. There's more duas as well. Duas of istiqamah. Inshallah. Number two. First thing we're going to make is dua for istiqamah. Yes, everyone? Inshallah. May Allah make us a community of istiqamah, inshallah. inshallah. What, else, what else do we want? You have istiqamah, you're going to have the best death. And you're going to be relieved of the whole, all the happenings of the dunya. Second is mujahada. You have to make some effort. So after Ramadan, look, in Ramadan we made some mujahada, right? You made some effort for taraweeh, for fasting. You have to make some extra effort now. More than what you used to do before Ramadan. Some extra mujahada. Okay? So ask yourself, what will be that extra mujahada? Understand? So with your tahajjud, with your Quran, something additional. Look, in Ramadan, we did our i'tikaf, right? We did riyadha. We came and stayed in the house of Allah. You could still do that. I'tikaf is not only for Ramadan. It's actually for the whole year. Spend some time in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make some mujahada, some riyadha. Alhamdulillah, I have planned something for this masjid here. What we have planned is that every, every at night time, at 9 p.m., we get together here. All the brothers. Look, in, in summertime, is the Isha going to go up or down? It's going up, right? 9.30, 9.40, yeah? Look, 9 p.m., you all just come to the masjid. Sounds like a plan? And just make niyat of etikaf and just stay here. You, inshallah, you have some good brothers you hang around with. You have their companionship. So you'll have some companionship. You have some dhikr. Make intention of etikaf. By 9 o'clock, can't you finish off the world? Or the dunya is too much for you? Fulfill all the rights of your wives, your kids. Um, your work, everything is done, and then at 9 p.m. you come to the house of Allah, or we can't even, we can't do that. It's too much. Too much. Understand? You have to make mujahada. How much mujahada do we make for the dunya? Hmm? How, 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 what's an average job? What is it, 8 to 5? Huh? Monday to Friday, are you sure? Or just you? <laughs> 8 to 5, eh? Ah, for this dunya. 8 to 5 for the dunya. Akhirah. How much mujahada are you going to do? So, Alhamdulillah, I've made a commitment, Alhamdulillah, myself, that look, life is short. You know, usually in the masjid, we invite people to one once a week halaqa, right? So I've decided life is too short, kabhi bhi khatam ho jayegi. We're going to come to halaqa every day. Kya khayal hai? Achha, new idea? I just invented this. New idea, Dr. Sam. New idea. We come to the masjid every day and spend time in a itikaf, in a learning environment. So do that. Uh, those of you who live far from here, go to your local masjid. And what makes it even greater, if there's a man of Allah there, if you find some alim, some kind of form of a teacher, and you be in his companionship, it's even better. Companionship is very important. Look, all our life, we've just ran after our rizq, right? Our money. But the money, the rizq part, is already decided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I created mankind and jinn kind only to worship me and only to know me. That's why we were created. Then right after that, the ayah says, "Ma uridu minhum min rizq." I don't want rizq. Wa ma uridu an yutaimun. I don't don't intend that they all feed me. 
Inna Allah huwa razzaq Allah is the razzaq the all sustainer. So we just have to put in some effort, but the main thing is we have to make the effort of the akhirah, the mujahada for the akhirah. So inshallah, all of us make niya, commit yourselves from today, inshallah, Allah make it easy for us. Think of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet sallallahu said that the akhirah compared to this dunya, no, this dunya compared to the akhirah is like, you know, you dip your finger inside the ocean and that little drop that's on your fingertip. He swore, Prophet sallallahu alayhi swore, but he said, I swear by Allah. That this dunya compared to the akhirah is like that, that little drop on my fingertip. So why would we invest 8 to 5? All your entire life has been invested for this dunya. And what have you invested for the akhirah? So you have to, it, it, you, you have to balance. We have to create that balance. We have to create that balance. And you have to learn. It's not that difficult. It's not impossible. It is possible. You, but there's a learning that goes behind it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Open our hearts to this. And the third thing, so the second one was mujahidah, the third is companionship. You, for, for, for istiqamat, what do you need? Companionship. Look, in Ramadan, we all worship because of companionship. You did taraweeh because everybody stood in taraweeh. All Muslims fasted 30 because everybody fasted 30. Companionship. You have to spend some time in com companionship. is a very important concept in Islam. In modern society, we have kind of like put that in the background. We've left it. Um, how look the Prophet ﷺ's students? They were not even called students. Were they called students? Talaba? No. What are they called? Sahaba. What are they called? Sahaba. Companionship. The Prophet ﷺ's students. They weren't called students. They were called what? Sahaba. That should highlight the importance of suhba, companionship. Companionship is everything. You have to put your ego down, understand, and sit in those companion and make yourself uncomfortable. Look, we, don't we make ourselves uncomfortable for the dunya? If you're going to a college, a university, and you're not feeling comfortable, are you going to push yourself to go? A new job, a new interview, maybe you're not feeling, un, you're not feeling comfortable. But you always go out of your comfort zone to do that, you know, which is important. So what about for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So these are three, guide, three guidelines for istiqamah. Number one is dua. Number two is mujahada. Number three, find that companionship. That companionship, that someone who follows the deen more than yourself. Uh, who understands the deen a little bit more than yourself and you will you'll have the knowledge of the deen through that person and you'll also have the practice of the deen through that person easy our deen has made life very easy me and you just don't think of it we our brain is in in overdrive our brain is always in overdrive these simple solutions that we're providing your brain is not going to accept it <laughs> it's too easy whatever i'm saying is actually quite easy do you get it? But our brains are always in over. So don't be in overdrive. Realize that Allah has made this deen. Allah has created this planet Earth. He's made these solutions, not me. I didn't create these solutions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. May Allah guarantee us istiqamah upon the deen. Wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah alameen.